This video was brought to you by Indently.io, learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about five random useful functions that you can use in Python. The first random function I want to show you is the shuffle function. For this example, I'm going to create a list of type string called people, and it's going to contain four names, Bob, Tom, James, and Sandra. Now imagine you want to randomize this list, or in other words, you want to shuffle this list. Well, to do so, we can just use the shuffle function and pass in that iterable. And that's going to shuffle the list in place so that the next time we print these people, what we're going to get back is a shuffled list. And this is going to change each time we run the program. It's going to shuffle those elements. Moving on to random function number two. And actually, as a bonus, I'm going to be showing you three functions here because all of these are quite similar. So here we're going to import from random the random function, the random integer function, and the random range function. And it's good to know about all of these. So first of all, we're going to be covering what random does. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to create a value of type float and just call random directly. And then I'm going to print that the random value is equal to that value. And what random does in Python is give us back a random value in the range of zero to one. So now if we were to run this, you'll see that we will get some crazy decimal back in that range. And each time we run it, we're going to get a new random float back, but it's always going to be in the interval of zero and one. But now imagine that you want to customize this. Well, unfortunately with random, we have no way of doing so. It's just going to give us a random value in the interval of zero and one. So instead, what we have to do is use a different function. And this time I'm going to create a list of integers. And that's going to equal this list comprehension. And inside I'm going to use the random integer function, which allows us to specify a sort of range or two endpoints. And the first endpoint is going to be 10 and 20. So this function here is going to generate a random number between 10 and 20 each time we call it. And both endpoints are inclusive, which means 10 and 20 might be generated as random numbers. And then we'll type in four underscore in range five, because we want to generate five of these. And then we can print the F string of random integer equals these values. And what we should get back when we run this are five random values. And I'm going to run this a couple of times just to show you that we will get both endpoints, such as 10 and 20. And finally, let's explore what random range does. So right below our values, we're going to create something called values two, which will be a list of type integer, and that's going to equal another list comprehension. But this time we're going to use random range. And inside the parentheses, we're going to insert zero and three, four underscore in range five. And below that, we're just going to print that rand range is equal to these values. I almost messed that up because I copied it directly from my other screen. Anyway, random range is very similar to random integer with one major difference. And that is that the upper bound is exclusive. So no matter how many times we run this, we will never get three included in the output. And I kind of lied there because there is another major difference and that is that you can provide a step. So here we can add two and we can make this 10. And now it's going to generate a random number in the range of zero to 10 with a step of two. And that just means we're going to get even numbers back. As you can see down here, each time we run the program, we're only going to get even numbers back or numbers with a step of two. If we were to start this at one, we would only get odd numbers back, but all of those odd numbers would have a step of at least two, which means we will get back one, three, five, seven, and nine. Up next, we have random function number three. And once again, I'm not just going to be showing you one function, but two which are closely related. So from random, I will import both choice and choices. And then I'm going to create a list of string, which will contain the exact same people that we had in the previous example. And previously I showed you how you could shuffle these people. 
but now I'm going to show you how you can select a random person or element from this iterable using choice. And actually to do so is quite straightforward. So here we're going to type in that choice is equal to the choice of people. And that's going to grab one random element from our people. As you can see, each time we run this, it's going to return to us a random element. And this one was quite straightforward. But what about choices? Well, to keep it simple, with choice, we could only return one element, while with choices, we can return several. So what I'm going to do next is print that the choices equals the choices with our people inserted. And by default, this is only going to return to us one element, such as James or James again or Sandra it's going to return only one element in the form of a list, which might or might not be that useful. So something else we can do is actually specify the amount of elements we want to get back. This just tells choices how many elements we want to grab from the original list and place into this new list. So if we specify k to be five, it's going to populate it with five random choices. And there's actually one more parameter that I want to show you that you can use with choices, which is quite cool. And this is called weights. So right above, I'm going to create some weights of type tuple, and that's going to equal 0 0.15, 0 0.20, 0 0.35, and 0.30. And then after K, we can just say that the weights are equal to the weights. Now, what this does is tell us what probability do we want to give each one of these elements to be included in the new list? So at this point, Bob will have a 15% chance of appearing, Tom will have a 20% chance of appearing, James a 35% chance, and Sandra a 30% chance. And the next time we run this, we should see those manipulated probabilities. Now James appears a lot. Moving on to random function number four, and this one is called sample. And it practically does the same thing that choices does, except with sample, we get unique elements back. While with choices, there are many chances that we're going to get the same element back. So to demonstrate how this works, I'm just going to print the sample of let's say the range of 100, and then I will specify K to be 10 because we want to get 10 elements back. But now if we were to run this, no matter how many times we run this, we will always have unique elements. Or that's not completely accurate, because if you were to insert, let's say, a list of one, one, two, three, both of these elements would be considered unique. So what I was trying to say is that it will only draw each element once from the original list. And here we can't insert 10 because there's not enough elements. And that's going to give us a value error. So if we have four elements, we're going to have to use the number of four to retrieve those. And it's going to draw them randomly from the first list. So if we change K to two, it's going to pick two, and then it will pick two again and two again. But these will always be unique. And that's why if you were to do something such as inserting the range of 100, you would never get any numbers that repeat. And it's easier to show you with 10. Every time it draws a number from this range, that number disappears from that iterable. Or at least that's how sample sees it. But there's actually something else we can do that's quite cool with sample. And to demonstrate it, I'm going to create some callers of list of type string. And that's going to be a list with the values of R, G, and B. And then we're going to print the sample of these callers. And we're going to set K to five. But obviously this is going to raise an exception because we don't have five elements in our list. So there's actually something else we can do. And that is multiplying each one of these elements by a number we specify. And to do so, we need to provide something called counts, which is a tuple. And inside here, we can specify how much of each element we want to include in our sample. So for example, we can say that the new list will contain 10 reds, 20 greens, and maybe five blues. So now with this being provided, sample sees a total of 35 elements in our colors list, because R was multiplied by 10, green was multiplied by 20, and blue was multiplied by five. So this time getting five elements back will work quite nicely. 
and since we have a lot of green, chances are we're mostly going to get green back. And finally, for the last random function of the day, I'm going to be teaching you about seed. And seed is incredibly important when you want to get consistent results back, which can be very useful if you are testing your program. So this time we're going to import from random seed random random integer and sample just to show you what seed does. And since we already discussed how all of these functions work, I'm just going to paste them into my script. And what we have here is me using all of these functions and printing their results at the same time using some fstring magic. PyCharm absolutely hates me because I'm using spaces between the equals, but when I print this out, it looks quite nice. We have random that gives us back some random decimal number. We have random integer, which gives us back a random integer. And we have sample with the range of 1000 and k set to five that gives us back five random numbers, which are unique in that range. And each time we run this program, the data is going to change because that's what we're telling Python to do here. We're telling it to generate some random results. And that's not always good for testing. Sometimes you're going to want to see which results crashed your program or which results gave your program some funky behavior. And with random data, that's practically impossible. So this can be a very useful place for using the seed function. And with seeds, we can insert types such as none, integer, float, strings, bytes, and byte arrays. To keep it simple, I'm just going to insert the integer of one. Now, when we run our script, we're going to get this random data back. But when we run the script again, and again, and again, you're going to notice that the random data is always going to be the same. And that's practically because we specified in our program to use the same seed for the number generation each time, which means we're going to get the same results back each time. In other words, we practically saved that state or we're able to reproduce those random numbers using this given seed. And each seed is going to be different. So if you put the seed of 200, it's going to give you some new random numbers. But anyways, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know what you think about these random functions in the comment section down below. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.